All right, we now move to the pricing counterparty credit risk chapter. And the pricing uh, counterparty risk is a function of a credit exposure of and default probability of a counterparty. Now, uh, we should know how to calculate the credit valuation adjustment in the presence of both unilateral and bilateral contracts. Also, we need to understand here uh, is the incremental and marginal credit valuation adjustment and how to el how to calculate a standalone and bilateral CVS spread. So, uh, this chapter would be uh, more or less about the credit valuation adjustment. The first heading here uh, is uh, pricing counterparty risk. So, the pricing of the counterparty risk that is how uh, how much to charge counterparty for the risk that it may default is a function of credit exposure and default probability of the counterparty. Accurately, accurate pricing of counterparty risk generate reserve to absorb potential losses. Uh, yeah. The pricing counterparty risk needs to also account for risk uh, risk mitigants uh, like netting and collateralization. Now moving ahead, the price of counterparty uh, risk approximates to the value of risk of all outstanding position with counterparty and exists in addition to the price of financial instrument itself that the counterparty uses. Example a swap. The best practice uh, will organize responsibilities as uh, to who should calculate counterparty risk within the financial institution. The challenge in pricing the type of risk arise with bilateral derivative agreement example swaps with fixed and floating components rather than one way uh, instruments such as bonds. Now let's understand what is credit valuation adjustment uh, when no wrong way risk is present. So credit valuation adjustment is defined as the expected value or price of the counterparty risk. A positive value represents the cost to the counterparty that bears greater propensity to default to risky security transaction as a risk free price with uh, no counterparty risk and adjustment for counterparty risk uh, that is uh, risky mark to market is equal to risk free mark to market minus CVA. The latter component uh, is the credit valuation adjustment. The credit valuation adjustment should account for the counterparty default probability, the transaction in question, netting, collateralization and hedging. CVA is calculated as a loss given default into expected exposure for future days into probability of default and into a discount factor. Speedy and uh, simplicity are the hallmark of this calculation which aggregates component from different department of risk management organization. The resulting amount may be expressed as a percent of uh, notional value of transaction on which it is based. Additionally, the formula assumes no wrong way risk and does not require simulation uh, default events uh, which simplifies the calculation. Now let's look at what is CVS spread. To approximate the CVA as is, uh, a spread, you would divide the CVA by the unit premium of a risky annuity like a uh, credit default swap for the contract in question producing an annual spread on the basis. This would be a charge to the weaker counterparty. The left hand side uh, of the equation represents a CVA of a running speed and the left hand side is CVA upon CDS premium and the right hand side is CDS premium at maturity into expected positive exposure which is the average of expected exposure over predefined period typically for, from the present to the maturity date. So uh, the CDS spread at the maturity uh, into the EP is equal to CVA upon CDS premium. So th this is the equation of the CVS spread. So uh, uh, the spread, uh, uh, the CVA uh, is uh, as uh, a running spread. Now, uh, uh, the assumption for this calculation include uh, that EP is constant over the entire profile and default probability is constant over the entire profile and X, uh, uh, E or default probability is symmetrical over the entire profile. So the whole idea here is to understand the uh, credit valuation adjustment at any point in time and uh, uh, link it with uh, the premium at maturity and the expected positive exposure in the future. So if we look at an example here and uh, a trader needs a quick approximation of the CVS spread 
on a swap the exposure uh, management growth comes up with an epe of 6% the counterparty credit spread is 375 basis point per year calculate cva as a running speed so cva as a running speed would be a uh, epe into counterparty credit spread so th that is what we calculated so that is known as the uh, cva spread which is uh, the uh, the cds premium at maturity uh, into the expected uh, positive exposure at maturity so that would be the uh, cva spread this is the amount that the trader may add to or subtract from the leg of the trade as the cv or credit charge and it is common way to represent cv as a risk charge to the client in the swap transaction so this is the kind of uh, risk that happens if you carefully observe uh, the expected exposure uh, epe or uh, the expected positive exposure into uh, 6% the exposure comes up with the epe the expected exposure is 6% and the counterparty's credit spread is 375 basis point so it's a counterparty's credit spread the counterparty's credit spread uh, is the uh, C, uh, uh, spread of the counterparty which uh, uh, which needs to be multiplied with uh, the uh, uh, epe then we have the uh, incremental and the marginal cva and we need to understand how to define and calculate incremental cva and marginal cva the practicality of cva lies in its ability to take into account risk mitigation provided by collateralization and netting the usefulness of stand alone cva is limited to giving the risk manager a quick apt, uh, appraisal of cva charge so incremental cva is the change or increment in cva that a new trade will create taking netting into account that is the difference between cva with and without new trade the formula differs from the original cva only in only in the change in the expected exposure the uh, delta e is the incremental change in e at each point in time caused by new trade which impacts the original exposure incremental cva is important for pricing a new trade with respect to the existing one CVA with netting will never be higher for CVA without netting since netting cannot increase the exposure the benefits of netting are function of transaction size the larger the transaction size the smaller uh, the benefit to point where the value of incremental CVA will approach stand alone CVA marginal CVA a marginal CVA enables this manager to break down netted trades into trade level contribution that uh, Uh, that sums up to the total cva the calculation is identical to that of a stand alone cva except for the substitution of marginal e instead of initial e the metric allows for more rigorous analysis as it is useful for better understanding which trade have greatest impact on counterparty cva it is it provides an ex post view of the trade now we have collateralized and uh, netting so in the collateralized uh, and netting we need to understand the effect on cva pricing so collateralization reduces cva changing only the counterparty expected exposure but not the default probability inclusion of minimum transfer and threshold amount would correspondingly increase the cva as they increase exposure linearly so netting reduces cva as uh, it nets exposure when trades are settled uh, one must evaluate the change in cva before and after a trade has been executed the new trade should be sufficiently profitable to offset any increase in cva at a minimum this expression uh, consists of uh, cva uh, included in new trade in netting set and cva on all current trades within the netting set so uh, uh, new trade in the netting set and all current trading uh, within the netting set and vi is the risk free value of all the new sets then we have the exotic products and path dependency so uh, uh, we we need to understand here how the uh, uh, 
pricing becomes challenging when uh, the CVA comes uh, due to the presence of exotic products and the issue of path uh, dependency. So regarding exotic products, valuation may require techniques such as Monte Carlo simulation. Thus, value approximation such products uh, may be necessary to estimate their CVA value given the complexity in the pricing. The product themselves uh, uh, may be uh, treated as uh, a different product. For example, swaption may be treated as forward swaps, bar window option payoff may be treated as a European payoff. Regarding path dependency, in order to assess future exposure at a given point in time, one must have information on the entire path from the present to the future date. As with exotic products, approximately the probability calculation of path dependence events will suffice uh, with dealing with exotic, exotic uh, derivative prices. Now, uh, CVA with a bilateral contract. Uh, define and calculate CVA and CVA spread in presence of a bilateral contract. Given a charge for counterparty risk that favors a stronger counterparty, typically a bank, CVA historical did not take into account that for both counterparties could subject to default risk. Now uh, the recent financial crisis changed this look and counterparty risk is now viewed as bilateral. Bilateral counterparty risk assumes that both counterparties may default the formula for credit valuation adjustment derives from original CV and, and assumes no simultaneous default, that is wrong way risk. The positive expression in the following bilateral credit valuation adjustment formula represents CV of the counterparty and negative expression represents the CV of the financial institution. The CV of the institution is known as debt value adjustment. The two terms in the expression are mirror images of one another. Uh, if the financial institution defaults first, it uh, books a gain when MTM is negative. That is because the institution in default will pay the counterparty the recovery amount of what they owe, which is a fraction of what they would otherwise own had they not defaulted. So that difference is again known uh, uh, is a gain to the defaulting party. Now there is a long uh, formula of uh, the bilateral uh, CVA. And it consists of survival probabilities, recovery probabilities, default probabilities, negative expected exposure, and uh, and uh, various uh, other terms. But uh, what uh, we need to understand here are the implications of uh, bilateral credit valuation adjustment model. Now, bilateral credit valuation adjustment can be negative if the second expression is larger than the first. Uh, the second expression here consists of uh, negative expected exposure and uh, 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 implying that the risk of derivative is greater than risk free value. Standalone CVA may only be positive. Uh, the second point here is two counterparties in agreement on parameters of bilateral credit valuation adjustment equation will settle up owing to the equation symmetry. For example, party one has a B bilateral CVA of uh, plus X and party 2 as minus X party O owns party 1 plus X due to party 2's counterparty risk. Netting the bilateral credit valuation adjustment may be of uh, disadvantage when the second expression dominates implying that the financial instrument is riskier than its counterparty. Without netting the institution may select contracts with uh, positive mark to market settlement discarding those with negative mark to mark settlement. Uh, values as bankruptcy liabilities. Fourth is if both party agrees on the parameters of the bilateral credit valuation adjustment calculation, the counterparty risk in marketplace is zero. However, this holds in theory but not in practice. Now, uh, BCVA as an excess of spread again is uh, uh, taken in the same way where BCVA uh, divided by the CDS premium is equal to CVA divided by the CDS premium minus XI into E and E. So XI is the institutional own credit default CDS spread and uh, is, uh, E and E is the expected negative exposure. Now even before this we were looking at the same equation where uh, we calculated their own credit uh, default swap to understand what's happening with them. So uh, that, that could actually find out uh, what's the probability of their being defaulting and then we multiply that with exposure to find out uh, what would happen in the complete way. Hence, the bilateral credit valuation adjustment can be represented as a running spread. The formula implies that institution may account for its own default through reduction of unilateral CVHR by its own credit spread multiplied by E&E.
the calculation of the uh, this formula is identical to unilateral cva it differs in that there is an additional subtractive calculation to reflect the bca of the financial institution now uh, th there could be a numerical on uh, this part which is computing bcba and uh, an easier way to understand this is that ep into counterparty credit spread minus ene into institutional credit spread and that is how we are going to look at the formula now pricing bilateral cva has got many issues bilateral cva enable both parties in transaction to ag agree on a price for risk the use of bc uh, bcva must be prudent as counterparties could value its own default with respect to default a uh, counterparty could possibly be realize a gain in several ways so file for bankruptcy doing so will increase recovery value but not improve the firm's credit worthiness otherwise any negative mtm realized is deemed as a gain coming close to bankruptcy unwinding a trade due to rapidly declining credit quality may cause the firm to realize again uh realize return paid on collateral <laughs> then we have hedge a firm may not sell protection on itself and making the booking of bcva difficult but not impossible an employee funding uh, employee funding argument cp is a long term receivable and ene is a long term payable providing some funding to the institution there are two way to resolve uh, the issue of risk mediation between the two counter parties with significant default risk uh, the quick fix here is that both parties use bc, uh, BC bilateral credit valuation adjustment the uh, party whose bilateral credit valuation adjustment is negative pays the other party then we have long term solution parties uh, conquer on their mutual significant counter party risk and mitigate it as best possible through netting collateralization or trading through a centralized clearing facility using cva a firm could book a profit on its own undervalued debt cva have allowed financial institution to book gains by marking down the value of that debt possibly to do so include going bankrupt buying bank debt with cheap, cheaper uh, uh on the chief with cash repurchasing debt through issue of new debt making synthetic repurchase of debt then we have the early termination option that is also known as a break cost that may be used to mitigate counter party risk it is an agreement to terminate or break the transaction at a specified future date at market rate the counter party risk charges such as bcv are not included when the clause is invoked this could be a cost effective way for stronger counter party to handle transaction with a significant exposure at less credit worthy counter party the counter party with uh, will with the increase bca should exercise eto as the party can unwind the trade at the mark rather than bcva rate is higher the institution would realize a gain through elimination of bcva obviously be on a trade uh, walk away feature occur when the financial institution able to gain from the negative mtm liability should their counter party default in that event of bilateral walk away feature the counter party may walk away from the positive mtm in the event of their default this feature reduces both unilateral and bilateral credit adjustment at as the uh, institute walk away realizes again so that was it about uh, uh, the motivations for pricing a counter party risk and uh, the mo i'm just going to repeat the points very quickly one again once again of what we did uh, in this session So the first uh, point is that motivation for pricing counter party risk include and there are two things organizing organization of responsibility within the institute with respect to pricing calculation determining whether a trade is sufficiently possible when factoring a counter party risk charge trade valuation adjustment is the price of the counter party risk and it is uh, calculated as loss given default into expected exposure into probability of default into summation of uh, all deals now positive value is a cost uh, to the company bearing the risk the basic cva formula assumes no wrong way risk then cva as a spread of cva is divided by risk annuity for the maturity of the contract in question producing an annual spread or a charge expressed as basis point which is cva upon cds premium incremental cva is used to calculate the cost of new trade versus existing ones to go to determine the effect that new trade had on cva stand alone cva cannot do this the formula for incremental cva calculation is identical to that for stand alone cva marginal cva is used for trade level attributions netting and collateralization can reduce the cva uh, minimum transfer of amount rounding and threshold increases the cva 
so uh, then we have the uh, bilateral cvi is a collateral value adjustment that pay, that takes into account the possibility that both parties could def out do not simultaneously implications include that bilateral cvi can be negative stand alone cvi may only be positive parties in agreement on bilateral cvi set in accordance with bcvi equation symmetry netting may be disadvantageous for financials when financial institutions counterparty risk exceed that of counterparty without an institution can pick which contract to settle and the formula of bilateral cva is bilateral cva upon cds premium is equal to cva upon cds premium into xi into ene so uh, credit spread of the counterparty uh, is used here in the calculation so that was all uh, regarding the credit valuation adjustment and the topic of uh, pricing counterparty risk now this has been tricky so i will just upload uh, another version of the same recording anyways i hope this added something to your current knowledge base and thank you for listening